We start at a soccer game. Elizabeth's boyfriend Jeffrey scores the winning goal with under 10 seconds left because all of Elizabeth's boyfriends have to be fantastic sports guys who win big games. No way is she gonna settle for anything less than fabulous. Argofunk book review, Argofunk book review. Everyone goes out for burgers and Ronnie Edwards shows up. I don't know why, because everyone openly hates him. Ronnie flashes a bunch of dollar dollar bills, offering to pay for everybody's food. He refuses to say where he got the money though, which is more than a little suspicious. Some shady guys ask Ronnie if he'll go outside with them in the dark where nobody can see them because uh, they want to see his car. Ronnie is all, okay, but Jeffrey figures something's up. He secretly follows them. The shady guys try to steal Ronnie's money, but Jeffrey beats them up and saves Ronnie. Since this is basically the only time anyone has ever been nice to Ronnie, he starts to follow after Jeffrey like a lost puppy for the rest of the book. So, where did Ronnie get the money? Gambling, which is illegal! Dun dun dun! He's got a bookie named Big Al, who's been letting him bet huge amounts of money on high school soccer games. That's what all the bookies in Southern California bet on. Not the professional sports teams, High school soccer. The subplot in this book is about Jessica. She is planning to become a famous earring designer. Ah, see, this is what I was talking about in Rags to Riches, when I said it could be nice to see Jessica come up with crazy schemes all the time. Trying to make earrings is so much nicer than plotting to ruin happy couples for no reason. A few days later, Ronnie is in big trouble. He owes $2,000 that he doesn't have. He asks everyone he knows, but the only person who gives him any money is Jeffrey. Ronnie calls Big Al with the bad news, and the conversation goes like this. Ah, uh, hi, Big Al. How's it going? I'm super. Thanks for asking. Where's my two grand? I... I only have 25 bucks. What? You owe me 2000 I'll get the money, I just need a little more time. If I don't get the money by Sunday, I'll kill you. Unless... Big Al says that he'll call off the debt if Sweet Valley High wins the soccer game by two points. Yeah, he's not betting on who will win the game, he's betting on the point spread. Ronnie begs Jeffrey to play badly during the game to keep the score low. Jeffrey's conflicted. Should he be loyal to his team, or should he be loyal to his friend? His annoying, law-breaking friend who he first met a few days ago. It's a dilemma. Jessica shows off her earrings to the manager of a store called Treasure Island. Jessica uses her friends as plants to make the earrings seem popular. The store buys eight pairs, and they put in an order for ten more. Here's the weird thing. Jessica just sold eight pairs of earrings, right? Well, she can't afford to make ten more. What what happened to the money she just made from selling the eight? How did she afford to make the original eight if they're so expensive? Mom agrees to loan Jessica $200, but Jessica gets dreams of big money, so she orders way more supplies that, than she needs. As in five times as much, that way she saves $2 per pair. That's an awful deal, but Jessica goes for it. As the cover shows, she asks Ronnie to spot her the money, and he snaps at her. Jessica goes back to Mom and says she needs a credit card to pay for the business. So Mom gives Jessica her card. Whoa, what? Mo, no, Mom, bad idea! Make Jessica get her own credit card. She's 16, she's old enough. Don't give her unlimited access to your bank account, that's just asking for trouble. Big Al attends the next soccer practice, and John the sports guy points him out to Elizabeth. How, how does John recognize Al by sight? Is there something you're not telling us, John? Anyway, Elizabeth figures out the entire scheme when she learns that a bookie's involved. She orders Jeffrey not to throw the game, and he stands up to her because Ronnie's life is at stake. Wow, good for Jeffrey standing up to his girlfriend when she's wrong. Also, bad for Jeffrey, you just stood up to Elizabeth. That means your relationship is doomed now, and you'll soon get dumped. That's how the series works, right? The game starts with Ronnie getting kidnapped. Big Al tells Jeffrey to fix the point spread if he wants to see Ronnie alive again. Elizabeth chases after the singular kidnapper, and she gets caught. She distracts the kidnapper by waving her head and asking him what his plans are. That way Ronnie can sneak around the criminal and knock him unconscious, and Ronnie redeems himself! Way to go, Ronnie! 
They rush to the game. Elizabeth orders the coach to call a timeout without telling him why. And the coach agrees because he respects the gossip column she writes for the school newspaper. What? Really? Coach would not stop the big championship game just for that. Well, whatever. Elizabeth gives Jeffrey a big speech, and he's so inspired he scores two goals and he wins the game. Big Al is arrested, and a talent scout offers Jeffrey a scholarship. Jessica is burned when the store cancels its order. Jessica could easily salvage her loss by selling the jewelry to a different store or by dismantling the earrings and returning the parts to the supplier, but that would be work, so she figures she'll just eat the $900 loss, cause hey, it's not like it's her money that got spent. Mom and Dad are angry when they find out, and they force Jessica to get a job. The end. Post-book follow-up. This is not a particularly good book, and most people agree that Jessica's subplot overshadows the main plot. Ronnie wasn't an interesting or sympathetic character, and we're supposed to be really scared for his safety, but the bookies are very G-rated in dealing with him. Like, instead of breaking his kneecaps or killing his dog, the bookie punches him once and throws him on sand. It's not as fear-inspiring as the book thinks it is. The thing that interested me the most was how the book juxtaposes Jessica's credit card with Ronnie's gambling. It's saying running up credit card debt is like betting with money you don't have. I don't know if the book was trying to send that message, but that's the message I got. While rereading this book, I noticed it does a good job of stretching the story out without making it seem like it's stretching things out. It also does a good job building up to the big soccer game. I just wish that Ronnie and Jeffrey were more interesting characters because they weren't interesting and it made the story fall flat. I give Sweet Valley High number 51 against the odds a 3 out of 10.